Hello, I'm Raymond Lee. And I'm Katie Hall, and this is LA Art. When author Jan Martel first tried to get his novel, Life of Pi, published, he was rejected by at least five different publishing houses. When it finally did hit bookstores, Life of Pi quickly won fiction awards all over the world. Initially, the movie version also was considered unmakeable, but the Academy Award-winning director Ang Lee also made that possible. Paula Zahn sat down with Lee and two of the actors from the recent movie, Life of Pi. My name is Pai Patel. I have been in a shipwreck. I am on a lifeboat alone with a tiger. Please send help. Welcome, Aang, Irfan, and Suraj. It is a delight to have you all together here to talk about Life of Pi. Let's talk about what it is based on. A, a best-selling novel by Jan Martel, which won a lot of awards, but a lot of people over the years thought it was unfilmable. When you read the book, did you think, Aang, that you could ever translate it into a movie? I didn't think there was a movie. I just read it for pleasure. I love it. I thought it's fantastic and also mind-boggling. I introduced my wife and my kids. We all read it and talked about it for weeks. Uh, that was one of those books. Uh, but I never thought it could be a movie. Why didn't you think it could become a movie? The voyage part has many fantastic events. It was vividly written. It looks cinematic. But it's, it's a book to talk about illusion, exam, faith, illusion. Uh, our emotional connection to the unknown, that sort of thing. It's kind of existential. Religious allegory? Yeah. I make illusion. I do storytellings. Uh, how do you make a movie which is all about illusion to examine illusion inside of it? But that changed when people asked me to do it five years ago. I got seduced. <laughs> is it true that you spent more time on this movie than you have any other movie in your career. Almost four years from start to finish. Yeah, twice as the Hulk, uh, three times as Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. Yeah, it took a year and a half just to get it off the ground, to get greenlit. Without giving the story away, can you give our audience a thumbnail sketch, particularly those who haven't read the book, uh, what the movie is about? It's about this boy. Pai, his family owned a zoo, and they decided to move to Canada. They took the whole menagerie of zoo, and they hit a storm, and the boat sank. Uh, the boy wound up with a Bengal tiger on a lifeboat drifting across the Pacific. It's an adventurous story, but at the end, there's a turnaround. And I understand, Suraj, more than 3,000 actors tested for the part you got. You had absolutely no acting experience. How were you able to deliver that kind of audition when you'd never done it before? Initially, it was, I wasn't even expecting to audition. And um, I don't know, I just, I just went for it. I read the book three times before the, the last audition. Because the first time I read it, I felt like there's something that is just not hitting me, but it's right here. And I just need to see it. So I read the book again. And what I realize is, is that is the point. You don't, there's something in life that you just can't get. You had to have an enormous leap of faith to cast Surge. Here's a kid who's never acted before, doesn't even know how to swim, and for the bulk of the movie, he has to be swimming in a, a huge water tank. What did you see in his performance? That he is willing to believe. That that's one of the rare talent, the best talent I could ever seek in, in a performer. You tell him something, he believes. He's saying there, every molecule of his body is following that belief. It's not even about the ability to perform, but to, to stay in the situation you give him. That's a rare, rare talent. Irfan, you came to the project with a major career in Bollywood films and, and great success uh, in American films, as well as uh, a runaway hit with In Treatment on, on HBO. What drew you to the life of Pi? Initially, it was Ang's name, uh, and I was doing in treatment at that time when I got a call from uh, A.V. Kaufman. She said, Ang wants to meet you, and I was completely obsessed by that character, and you know, 
So I went to meet him and that was, his name was enough for me and uh, the book was lying with me, I never read it. You're kidding me. No, I, I waited for the, uh, for the time of uh, when he says that I, I confirm that you are going to play the part. Because what happens, you know, you start investing yourself, investing emotionally, and you don't, you, you protect yourself emotionally, you know. So I was, you know, I was waiting. So once you landed the part, yeah. and you read the book, what, what did the novel mean to you? I think novel is, uh, it's, 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 it's not about one thing, so it takes time to sink in. And, and I think that's what makes the film so fascinating, because as I left the theater, we were all debating, what did that mean? And as you were saying, you can interpret it on, on so many different levels. The story in itself has so many layers. You can see it as an adventure movie, and you can see it with all its hope and inspiration, or you can see it as something, ex I mean, it gets from very inspirational to extremely dark, and you can see it as all of that. I know that doing the film uh, physically was, was arduous for you. Here, here you are, someone who's never swum before in your life, and you're suddenly swimming in this huge water tank. Let's talk about the physical demands that were made. Um, when I got to Taiwan, there were first there were three months of training. Everything, basically, from the swimming to learning how the ocean works, getting familiar with boats and rafts, starting to do yoga, meditation, uh, gaining weight, gaining muscle, uh, eventually losing weight, being on that diet. Yeah, you had some canned food there for a while. Basically, it was tuna and lettuce Right. for a while. I gave him a lot of acting lessons myself. I participated in many parts of his trainings, so I know how he developed as a person, as an actor. And every day of the five, six months of shooting is training day for him. And we're shooting order because he has to believe in what's going on. He has to lose weight. Every shot is him. We don't use stun. And I forbid anybody talk to him for the last couple months. So he's getting into that spiritual world. The structure of the film is that it's sort of divided or falls into three parts. So the first sequence follows Pai's childhood and his family. And we learn how you were raised, Hindu, but later introduced to Christianity and Islam. And then at a point in the film, we learn that uh, you want to practice all three religions. You just want to love God. Would you say that his spiritual journey uh, during those tender years is what was supposed to prepare him for this nightmare that awaited him? I think what prepared him to, to love God in his childhood is really their religions, organized religions. But when he lost all of that, lost society, lost his family, everything he can rely on, his cast on the sea with a tiger on a lifeboat and facing the abstract idea of God. So he's facing God instead of religions. How do you deal with that? The most amazing thing about this film is that you have no idea where the CGI animation starts and where it ends. What's real? It doesn't matter if it's real or not. It's how you see things in your mind's eye. I can do the best CGI if you don't believe in the story. It doesn't matter. It, it won't work. If you invest your belief in it, they come to life. You actually put a tiger in the water, right? In one of the yeah, scenes, yeah, it's yeah. a national tiger. We have tiger four tigers, three French, one can Canadian tiger, all Bengal tigers. And sometimes we took them to the water tank to shoot, have them swim, have them react to water. Uh, sometimes we shot that first, then we shoot him. Uh, the tiger are great references. I was fascinated to hear and, and, and touched how your colleagues reacted to Suraj's performance. Tell me about the filming of the last scene. It was a very touching morning when we finished shooting, wrap him up. Uh, it was 7 o'clock in the morning. We went through a whole night shooting. We're shooting him alone on the treetop. It was like two stories high. And when I rapped, I purposely didn't let anybody give him a letter so he couldn't come down. And I, I have the whole crew gathered around the tree and everybody praise him and tell him how we really felt about him. 
Just some final thoughts on what you hope your audiences will take away from the life of Pi. First of all, which is more evident, is hope. Just you believe in yourself and you believe in something bigger than yourself to come and take you out of that situation and put you out. Because every human being goes through what Pi did in their own way, in their own life. And, and, and some of your, your thoughts. I think, you know, if you can uh, just realize that, you know, uh, there's no hope in rationality, <laughs> you know, there's no hope in def definitions. You know, it's just, it's just a mystery, it's just a magic what's, what we are experiencing, you know. And uh, don't try to understand it. Just feel it and experience it. I hope when people watch the movie, they, they get stirred up, they start thinking um, the unbelievable. I think it's a wonderful thing. That's why we watch movie in the first place. Life of Pi will be available on Blu-ray and DVD in March.